What does it mean to meditate? You're trying to train the mind. Because the untrained mind can create, create all kinds of trouble for itself. Just like an animal in the house that you haven't trained. It creates messes here and there. No matter how much you tell it to stop, it won't stop because it hasn't been trained. But once you train it, okay, then you can live together. And some animals you actually get some use out of. It's even more the case with a mind. When the mind is well trained, you can live in comfort and not do unskillful things. You can live in discomfort and not do unskillful things. And you can actually do positive things to help yourself and help others. So the first quality you want to develop as you train the mind is mindfulness, keeping something in mind. And that goes together with alertness, which means you watch what's actually happening. You notice what's actually happening. So we practice by keeping the breath in mind. Watch the breath as it comes in and goes out, and remember not to go off someplace else. This quality of memory is what makes all the difference, because you can watch the breath for a second or two and go someplace else, and it doesn't really ma make that much of a difference. But if you remember to stay there, and then you really put in the effort to stay there, that's the third quality called ardency, then the mind starts to get trained. Things get different in the mind. Instead of just wandering away as it likes, it runs up against a wall. The wall says, nope, you go back to the breath. You come and stay with the breath, and it first feels a little confining, but as you stick with it after a while, you begin to realize you can make the breath as comfortable as you want. And when the breath is comfortable and it has a sense of ease, you can spread that ease to the body. That becomes a lot more pleasant and congenial to stay here in the present moment. And you want to stay in the present moment because the forces that are shaping your life are happening right here. In other words, your choices that you're making, things, the things you're going to say, the things you're going to do, things you're going to think about. These are the choices that shape your life. And if you're not here watching over the choices, you're like the owner of a factory who's set up a factory and then goes off and wanders someplace else and lets the factory run itself. Well, who knows what agendas the staff is going to have? Who knows how much you can trust the people in the factory to do a good job? You come back, ah, oh, they've created a huge mess and you've got to clean it up. It's the same with the mind. Choices are being made all the time in the present moment, but we're not really that alert to what those choices are. We create all kinds of trouble for ourselves. We end up saying things, and if someone asks, why did you say that? You have to think back for a while, and you're not really 100% sure why you said it. Or why did you do something? Well, you're not 100% sure. That's a really dangerous situation, because these are the forces that are shaping your life, and you don't know what they are. But if you're alert and mindful and ardent here in the present moment, you can gain a greater sense of what the mind is doing. You can bring it more under your control. Because you look at where you're going to find some control in life. You're going to control other people. That doesn't work. You're going to control the weather. That doesn't work. You're going to control the economy. That doesn't work. But if you can control the mind, then you can live with what other kind of weather or people or economy there is, and you don't have to suffer. You learn how to separate yourself from the things that are not going to lie under your control. That can cause you a lot of trouble. Because you have your own independent source of well-being inside that you've been creating as you stay with the breath. So this is what we work at as we meditate, make ourselves more responsible for ourselves. So John Swat used to say, each of us has only one person in the world. In other words, one person that we're responsible for, and that's ourselves. And yet if we don't attend to this responsibility, you go looking at trying to make other people responsible to your wishes, you just create a lot of trouble. They see that you're not being responsible, so why should they be responsible? So you've got to set a good example. And even if other people don't follow your good example, at least you benefit from the fact that you've trained the mind. So keep this point in mind. This We look after our bodies every day, we wash them, we brush our teeth every day. You should learn how to look after your mind every day as well, because it's a lot more important. <laughs>